Oh, hey, uh, quickly. So I have a new setup here with a mic and I don't know what I did, but the audio quality is a little bit bad in this video. So sorry about that. Welcome back here at the webcam location again, where I have set up this super duct tape microphone for myself, professional. I've put on a shirt for you guys. Still Corona here, locked in, but hey, I thought we can go on and talk a little bit more about organic stuff, mainly humans, because I promised that we will do more humans and what's more organic than this fleshy organic shape that we are humans. So uh, let's get into that. Okay, we're back in sketchbook and guess what we are going to start drawing here? Yes, exactly. We're going to draw boxes and blocky things again. Not again, you might say yes, again, because everything, everything can be simplified to a box. This, this baked potato here, it can be a box. This orange, it can fit into a box. It can be made a box. This Turkish bread, yeah, this can also be a box. So once again, I'm just going to mention this. It is very important that you understand how to draw, rotate, and just place boxes in, in, in perspective and how to move them around within a perspective and how, how to change the angle of these boxes. And one thing that I'm going to add to boxes is also cylinders, especially since we're talking about humans, a lot of the limbs are going to be represented by cylinders. And that's why I also started with a box, because once you know how to place a box, a cylinder basically just fits in there. So even, even if you don't know how to draw cylinders, you know how to draw a box. And basically that's all the warm up. There's a lot of videos I have on the fundamentals, how to do the cylinders, how to do the ellipses, how to do the boxes. So just go through there and make sure to exercise and do them as much as possible. All right, so in today's video, we are talking, we're going to talk about humans and drawing humans because uh, I said we are very organic. And I'm not going to teach you anatomy, obviously, but it is going to be a breakdown of how you can approach something like drawing a human. So, uh, simplest things, what, what you can do is obviously boxes. So, you have the upper body, uh, waist, you can like, usually you can, you can decide if you want to put them together or not. You have sort of a triangle for where you have your waist and also your legs are connecting to your foot. Uh, the two legs, well, the legs, your legs are connecting to your body, not to your foot. The two legs, I like to draw them as cylinders whenever I, I draw humans. So we have upper leg cylinders, balls for the joints, and then lower leg cylinders. Legs, usually, if I bring this down a little bit, as you can see, wrong here, legs tend to taper. So that's something that you can keep in mind whenever you're drawing something, it's going to be a cylinder, but it's going to be a tapering cylinder. So that, that should always help you out a little bit. Once again, this is not gonna be super anatomically correct. I'm just trying to help you out how to break down complex and organic shapes like humans. And then we have the joints again, which are the Oh, actually, I don't know how I call thing for the feet. And then we have the feet. And the same for the upper body. Well, from the upper body, we have the two shoulders. Then I usually do, again, you have cylinders for the upper arms, joints, and cylinders for the lower arms. And these also taper. Uh, don't make them too long. So that's, that's something that you have to watch out for. And then you have the hats. Like this is a little bit too long, but uh, it's, it's fine. And then you have the neck and the neck uh, is usually a cylinder as well. You will see that it's useful. And then the head, you can do either a square. There's, there's many ways people, I sometimes like to draw a sphere. I cut out the, the two sides of it and I just prolong it a little bit. But this is a little bit harder. It's, I find it much easier to just draw a square there and then you're done. And this, this, these are the elements that I draw for humans. One more thing, let me move these a little bit. So one thing that I also do that could simplify, complicate things for you, depending how you approach it, is for the upper body. What I like to do, I like to split it into two. And then I have 
cylinder where you waste it. And then I have, you can either do a box, but what I like to do, especially if I draw it from the side, if this is a cylinder, I like to draw a, a, a shape like this. This represents the rib cage because, well, this, technically this is an organic shape. So let's let's just stick with a, let's just stick with the box if it's easier. Just because in in general you have a little bit of a thinning there. Not everybody, but but it it happens because just you work out the back the back it gets bigger. Okay, so let's apply this to our friend here, right? Let me take this layer away new layer and let's see what what we can see here i will bring the opacity down a little bit here and choose red color and just draw over our photo so we can we can sort of understand what's going on here so let's start with his head his head is just straight on nothing it's it's, it's looking at us so it's it's basically a box but we're looking straight at it so we we don't really see that one in perspective then the neck is cool because the neck is a little bit tilted like this I really like that then we have this upper chest area that we have here and you also see the back is like this nice triangular muscle so you can go along with that also like this here this is not a rule at all so I'm not teaching you rules I'm just teaching you how I approach things and from there you can always deviate to, to something that works better for you so this is his lower body I'm just put in it cylinder there then this is one of the shoulders and this is the other shoulder and obviously because we are a little bit in 3d space so this is the side of that chest area this shoulder is visible meanwhile this one is like half hidden because this is behind the body and then we look at this is cylinder one upper arm this is cylinder two lower same here let me raise a bit cylinder one upper arm and cylinder two lower arm i'm not gonna teach you anything about the hands right now because that's a separate thing and also these things you can all find technically so yeah i'm gonna do the triangle here and these things you can all find i mean that there's a tons of how to draw a hand how to draw this how to draw that specifically i just want to give you a, a, a general view and then we have one and two hips right here and two and a little behind it again and this is covering that so from here we have one leg tapered then the other leg also tapered and these are the upper legs then you can draw the balls which are the knees there and then we have the tapered lower legs one and two and then the joints there and then i'm just gonna draw these sort of wedges for the feet there we go i didn't draw the hand here but it's in the pocket it's not so important for us and then we just draw the shoulder and then bring the opacity back up oh, and move our little fella to the side there you go. So this this is how you build a human. And from here, this is also why I say it's important to understand how we because I, I can I now now I know this setup. Now I can turn my human a little bit more. So I know that this would be the chest area. Or maybe maybe let's keep him at the at the same eye height level. I tend to do a, a three quarter view. So let's fix that up. So this would be the back, neck is like this. And now we would see a little bit of the, the head, the side as well, right? Because we're, we're, we're looking more from there. So we see this area of the head a bit more. Uh, this is still cylinder. Then obviously his pelvis, triangle area, whatever you want to call it rotates a bit more as well don't forget the shoulder is here the other shoulder is look really not visible now uh, let me make the shoulder a little bit there so the arm was here the other arm sort of ended somewhere here 
right? So this was the other cylinder. Let me erase what's inside of the cylinder. And this was one leg and two legs, so cylinder one, cylinder two. This is, this is why it is important, and I keep on telling you over and over again, if you have this box, you have to learn how to rotate the box, because once you know how to rotate the box, technically you can rotate everything in the world, and it's going to be a huge help for you. Once again, sorry about the audio, guys, but uh, I don't know what I messed up in the setup. It's just a big echo room. I should have paid more attention. Anyways, I just wanted to make sure to point out that you can also use sort of like a stick figure where the human skeleton would be. I like to map it out sometimes with sort of these sticks so I know where the joints are and where the sticks technically go. Uh, and this is the other way I do other than using the well, basic shapes like the boxes and the cylinders. As you can see with this young lady, I drew the stick figure over her body and then next to it, I try to construct the same shapes, but then with uh, cylinders and the boxes. So whichever works best for you, the, the, the whole meaning of this exercise is for you guys to have a better understanding of simplifying and really just catching what you want. Once again, it is very important to also study anatomy. So if you really want to draw humans, make sure to do live studies, do the Bridgman anatomy books, do all sorts of um, maybe anatomy courses if you want to. But yeah, in general, you just can find a whole lot of information when it comes to anatomy on the internet. And that information is to be combined with this. So don't just rely on this. Don't just rely on one thing. Always try to combine as many information sources as you can. Because as I said, I am not uh, really good with anatomy. I just use it here and there where I can. And I am constantly learning it as well. So, and with that, I just wanted to go towards a final exercise where I was, well, technically I wanted to use this sort of drawing for industrial designers where they have to present some sort of product. And as I said before, we are going to return to hands and talk about hands a little bit in the future because especially product designers use hands a lot. But I also know that I have quite a, a number of people following me who are just interested in illustration. So in general, to see how you can interact, well, not interact, but how you can combine uh, a human body with um, a product that is why I also wanted to make this sketch with uh, the biker guy and the bike. So the biker guy using the bike. And this is sort of a study, but once you know, just like I showed you in a previous uh, part where I rotated the person I drew, that gentleman in his shorts, uh, once you see a picture, then you can basically try and rotate it in your head because all you have to rotate are these basic shapes. So here I am mapping out the, the, the person on the bike with these basic shapes in red, as you can see. Uh, and that in the end you can rotate. So already in your head, you can either do a study. Uh, one, one important thing is always use, not always, but use a mirror. You can always take a look at yourself in the mirror, what you're doing, or use pictures. Take a picture of your loved one, take a picture of your roommate, of yourself, doesn't matter. But uh, the important thing is to, to help yourself out in whatever way you can. And as you can see, yeah, I, I got into the drawing, the, the guy, and I'm just trying to build him up, making it as simple for myself as possible, using these cylinders, using the, the box for the upper body to, to try to understand how uh, it's built up. And uh, as you can see, that upper body has a little bit of twist in it. So we do see a little bit from his side. And if you draw it out once like this, when you go over and you will see me go over later uh, with, with darker lines as well, then you can also construct the clothing and whatever goes on there uh, much easier. And later in this drawing, well, later in, in, in a minute, 
clothing will come as well and that's again drapery studies are needed for that drawing drawing clothes drawing hanging stuff like this is again a different thing that you will have to study you will have to just take a shirt or whatever throw it on a, on a chair and just see how every, all the folds are forming all these things so it, it is obviously you cannot put that much knowledge into one single video it is just a small little bit and piece and I'm using in my drawing I'm using a lot of knowledge that I already uh, uh, accumulated throughout the years and that's 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 what I'm putting together and it's still full of mistakes but that's totally fine that's okay as long as you know they're there and as long as you try to work on them and also the, the, I, I made this like relatively quickly I, I didn't spend hours trying to fix all the mistakes you also have to think about what's important and what's not and especially if you do like product presentation your human does not have to be the most fantastic human of the world it just has to represent the the use case how how he or she is using that particular object whatever it is anyways i hope you enjoyed this video uh sorry for the weird audio in the beginning i am really start i'm i'm, I'm going right now onto amazon if, uh, if they deliver and i'm going to look into ordering a proper microphone and the thing that the microphone has to go into and then that has to go into the computer and then i have to learn all new shit how to use these things like oh. <laughs> but i'm not complaining i'm not complaining i definitely want to make these videos better if uh, and and i don't want to have these weird uh, audio glitches again with with the echoes and the hard s's that you can hear and all this stuff and cleaning up it's but yeah welcome welcome to first world problems and me complaining about those <laughs> so i will stop now uh, once again i do hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something and um, yeah just make sure to have fun while you're drawing and uh, yeah hit that like button if you want to dislike if you dislike this video always leave me comments i love reading them and i'm trying to reply to them as fast as i can and uh, yeah, that's mostly it. <laughs> As I say, the most important thing is that you guys have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.